We haven't been in there with food since May. We will not jeopardize the health and safety of those we serve or those who are serving in an attempt to expeditiously uh, perform some intervention because it looks like the right thing to do. We are going to use this opportunity to get food in quickly over the coming days to give us a space to develop the next solution for providing uh, ongoing assistance. So we are not asking Russia for approval to know. This is a one-off, that they don't want to see children starve. They don't want to see women and old and seniors go hungry. So they are giving us this opportunity. But so we're, we're, then what we have is time. And we will work with the international community um, and the Jordanians to uh, fashion other solutions. Uh, we are in conversations with the Syrians, because from what can we do from the Syrian side of the border as well as from the Jordanian side of the border? What are the other options? And we will use every option in our toolkit. Coming over the coming months, before the end of this year, we should have a joint response. The challenge inside the berm is, the, unlike Deir Zor, where we're doing an airdrop, and you have the Syrian Arab Red Crescent working inside Deir Zor, you don't have any humanitarians working inside the berm today. And so to suggest that you can have an organized airdrop inside the berm where the, the black marketeers won't, um, won't get access to the food or other items and then sell it back to those who need it is a question we can't answer.